Hey everybody, this is Josh Cook, aka Seizures Palace, and today we are about to go over Song A Week number 19. And this one's a little bit different than all the other ones because uh, basically this song I don't have I don't have the DAW file for it, the session file for it anymore. I just found uh, found out that at some point, like this is like almost two years ago, the song was like nearly done and I kind of just like banked it for an upcoming album and then that didn't end up working out so well, I guess. Here's what happened. So I had this file and then I duplicated it, opened it up kind of as a template, erased most of what was going on or deleted most of what was going on and then I brought in some new elements but I would keep things like the drums and the sub just to make sure that the mix on those were okay. And I'd play around with the patterns a little bit and stuff like that but I just found like I kept trying to come to the same sort of drum sound and, and sub sound and I figured once I got it pretty close anyway, I, I wanted to kind of variate it on on the album so i ended up duplicating it and at some point i guess i saved over it so anyway the name of the track was rise and it's pretty cool so feel free to go down to the description and check out the full version of that but i don't have it right now so what you're seeing in this uh ableton file right now despite the name up here rise it's not rise but like i said i duplicated it over many times so the drums are basically the same in this is this is a song called classic kill or classical and these are the drums from that song and they're basically the same as from rise but the drum patterns are a little bit changed but the idea is the same and i wanted to share with you guys how i did the layering um still working on my mix game so there might be some uh stuff a little bit off with this but as far as i can tell i'm pretty happy with it and uh, i wanted to share with you guys how i did the drum layering for many of the tracks actually for n eight of the tracks that are going to be upcoming on my next album uh which i'll i'll drop the name of it now it's uh, still electric so we had born electric for the first album still electric is coming out sometime hopefully soon i'm hoping to get it mastered based on a canada council for the arts grant by the end of february it was meant to drop this fall but uh the grant popped up and i thought i'd give it my best shot so if that doesn't work out got some backup plans in mind but you don't need to know about that let's check out what's going on here so so you can see there's quite a bit going on in terms of layering if i was to open up the what i call kick and snare there's actually a little bit of hi-hat information and other stuff as well too we have are kick sub and kick sub long so I have a ooh, 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 sort of thing going on with the kick just for something different I was looking for a different way to approach the drums instead of just your classic boots and cats maybe it's butts and cats and boots and cats I don't know just little changes in that so we have that going on so the RMS for both is about the same uh, and I had to really bring up the kick sub the, the shorter of the two kick subs uh to to get the rms or the average volume to be about the same on those two um and then i think on most of the other songs i had this to start and then i just ended up going with the shorter sub uh kick and yeah in terms of layering i have kick low mid so that sounds like this and that's only paired with the kick sub just to give it a little bit more oomph and presence and then kick mid is on all of them kind of clampy sounding i'm just gonna throw that word out there clampy sounding i don't even know what that means it's kind of like it's a whole lot of mids for the most part and then into the highs we have kick click as well as a kick hat normally i go softer i know maddian uses pretty soft hats to complement his kicks uh these are a little more ticky so i think i might sort of soften those a little bit down the line but you'll still get to hear the full product in a second uh a low clap oh, and keep in mind that the claps and the snares are happening on beats two and four. So on beats one and three, or the shorter of the kicks, that's why I use the kick low mid just on those spots, just to kind of make up the difference of what isn't happening um, in that moment. Whereas on beats two and four, like I said, there's the clap and the, the snare and that kind of stuff. So whenever those aren't happening, I wanted to make up that difference a little bit so it didn't just feel um, too disjunct, we'll say. We have a clap high. We have a snare high. Sorry, snare low which actually has quite a bit of high-end information too. I like short, punchy snares. This one's actually a really great one. I think it's Noise Factory Complex Electro Bundle and Snare High. A little bit more reverb, a little bit more snap. Shaker, again, just emphasizing the kick on all four beats. Uh, a little bit of a hi-hat pattern. So notice that there is a bit of an accent. Tss, 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 tss sort of emulating a regular drummer. I think I might have randomized the velocity a little bit on top of that too. 
And then it looks like that's most of what's going on there. We got some white noise hits. Uh, some reverse claps. There it is. A hi-hat loop. Eh, or it's more of a, sh a tambourine loop, I guess. But anyway, when you put it all together, here's what you got. So it's funny, why I came up with the idea to have a short kick sub followed by a long kick sub has to do with, back to Maddie, and he has this way of like suction cupping his drum. So it's, it has this feeling that I can't quite explain. And I was like, okay, what can I do to kind of get close to that? And trying to reverse engineer, I was way off, but I came up with my own little kind of neat thing. I'm sure some other guys do it too. So short uh, sub followed by a long sub for the kick. And it kind of still just gives it oof, 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 this sort of, pumping sort of feel to it and I'm not overdoing it either I just wanted it to be a kind of subtle in the background sort of thing so we have that going on then later we have not much difference yeah that's the main thing so I just kind of wanted to show you guys what's going on in terms of the layering there uh, I can go into it a little bit further uh, if you guys are total beginners and wanted just the idea of how to layer kicks you can leave now but if you want to stick around I can show you a bit on the EQ and compression end as well too. So the uh, here's the issue with these kick subs I actually processed them a bit and then re-exported them or froze them or whatever you want to call it and then brought them back in so there's some processing here that you can't see but what is important is that the width has been brought down to zero and you can expand that a little bit I know if I listen to just the side information of dead mouse you do hear a little bit of the low end of that kick come through so feel free to just use something like the BX solo what the heck is that thing called again I always forget the name of that it's called the or is it yeah the bx solo by plugin alliance so check out that one and uh it has it's a plugin rather and it has the ability to just listen to mono information or side information and for the longest time i was so focused on listening to mono information and getting a mono translation and mono this mono that but side information it was really cool to be able to check out what the pros were putting along the sides and dead mouse allows a little bit of those lows to go through on the sides not too much like not huge sub information but he's really smart about it i think he found a good crossover point of what translates well into side information but doesn't eat up too much of the mix so anyway i have it set to 200 hertz a uh, low pass filter and i think that's the same on both yeah this one probably had the low pass and then got consolidated from there yeah they both have the 200 going on there and then but a native instrument solid eq a little bit of a boost towards 200 um i like to look between sometimes 100 i'll put a bit of a boost or between 100 or 200 or upwards of 200 depends on where a lot of the initial uh punch of that kick is uh sort of centered within the frequency so uh, feel free to search around through there and then keep in mind that you may want to put a little bit of a boost on the really low sub information but if you're going to do that make sure you have a sub to double check what is going on down there low mid kick so i had 110 hertz anything below there you're not listening to or you're not hearing for the most part and everything above 600 so it's just kind of like lows and low mids that kind of idea and then there's a little bit more with opening up there 38 percent kick mid it's everything above 900 between 900 and 4000 hertz or 4 kilohertz swept out something some frequencies just above 1k gave a little boost around three a little bit of a transient master to add a tiny bit of attack and again that's this guy here oh hold on i got rid of transient master Hopefully you hear the difference between those two. Just a little bit more presence. Kick, click. More transient master. Everything above 6K. For some reason, I kept the width on that really down. Maybe I was playing around with the side information and just preferred it. I would normally go for the higher parts of the kick a little bit wider. Kick hat. Da, da, da. Same idea, actually. Hold on a second. Oh, well, isn't that interesting? The kick click and the kick hat I put on the same sort of effects, keeping them in a, same, a similar area, but I probably mixed them low enough that they weren't eating up. Uh, either one of them wasn't eating up too much of that uh, high content. Clap low. Just some filters. Yeah, if any... <laughs> kind of interesting how I have them set up. I think I was trying to get rid of a little notch in, a, in around 1 to 2K. 
probably could have used an EQ for that. It was probably just some weird happenstance that brought me to that. Clap high. So everything above 900 hertz and the width is up full. Why do I have a utility on most of these? Well, if I want to bring up or down their volume, I'm going to automate the utility and not the actual track volume. So that way later I can raise or lower all the tracks together. It's also panned a little bit to the left and the snare high. What? It's panned to the left as well. Something tells me that's supposed to be to the right. Hmm. I'll play with that later. Anyway, panning out some of the high information I think is important. I probably should have leveled out the pan a little bit. But again, this is a song that uh, isn't fully, fully mixed. But for the most part, it's getting pretty darn close. So that's on my list of things to do for later. Uh, snare low, a little bit of a boost around the fundamental. And then I really take anything else out. I brought down the width to 30%. Uh, it could be worth going through and see if there's any harsh frequencies that need to be stripped down. But apparently... Uh, when I did this track, I didn't feel that was necessary. The snare high has a little bit of saturation on it. Just the soft sign. Um, width is down, and you're listening to stuff above 2K. Transient master on the shaker, nothing else. And that's with the sustain down and the attack up. Let's listen to that with and without it. So that just brings it up a little more forward. Or for you guys, it's like that. <laughs> and then we have a hi-hat. Lots of sparkle on that one. The saturator was used, and then I didn't really use an EQ afterwards to counteract that. In retrospect, it might be nice to put an EQ after, just kind of soften that hi-hat a little bit. But what I would like to do, if I'm playing around with that, is use something like this. There's a high-pass filter. Just listen to stuff up around this area here with the rest of the mix and see if it's too sparkly on top of the rest. You want it to kind of just meld in a bit, but it is the hi-hat, so it does have a lot of demand to be up in that higher area. You just don't want it to be too harsh on big club systems. There's a filter happening there, so it sounds kind of weird. Yeah, that takes you through most of it. So you can see the main thing I was focused on is isolating each of the individual drum layers so they were in different frequency bands. And I was doing that through the auto filter with low pass and high pass filters. Bit of saturation on some of the higher content just to bring out a sizzle. Probably could have, in retrospect, tamed a little bit of that sizzle afterwards with an EQ. I'll probably go back and do that later. Um, I have the short sub kick followed by the longer sub kick that I used to sweep uh, out all the high content above 100 hertz, and so now I've chosen around 200 hertz to get more of the initial punch as well, too. Um, there's a bit of a parallel uh, bus compression happening on the drums. I'm not going to go through that right now. The main idea was just to understand there's a lot of layers happening on the drums, um, but it's all relatively simple stuff. I'm not oversaturating things with a whole lot of crazy intense plugins. I'm really watching uh, when I can get away with using Ableton uh, specific plugins just to lighten the CPU load a little bit. Because when you're going with this many layers, you don't want to eat up too much CPU before you've even started adding in melodic, harmonic, and other sort of content like that. So I think that's everything that I wanted to say for today. We're keeping it short at 13 minutes. But uh, I wish I could have showed you guys Rise in its natural form within Ableton, but it's done. So anyway, I'm going to be putting that one up. I might have to master it a little bit. I'm going to put that one up for this week's Song a Week, and I might also be putting it on my Seizures Palace SoundCloud on future album releases. It's technically probably not going to work its way onto an album unless mastering somehow totally saves the track. Um, but with that said, I'd still like to kind of give a sneak peek as to what sort of style I've, I've chosen for the next album, which is a bit more orchestral fused with some of the same um, metal undertones that I had on the first album, that sort of chugginess. So anyway, go check it out. Check out the description below, and that'll give you an idea as to what Rise sounds like. And again, that was used as a bit of a template for the whole uh, first half of the next album. So that'll give you a bit of insight as to where my music's going. And a lot of it, I have 18 unreleased tracks right now that I've been working hard on and about 40 that didn't make the cut. So I'm hiding a lot from you guys. These song weeks that I'm showing you are just quick little, like quick little tunes each week basically but uh all the big ones i'm saving and applying to some labels applying for some grants and i will keep you guys posted on that stuff but this is the preview so hopefully you guys check it out one more time my name is josh cook aka seizures palace don't forget to comment like and subscribe tell your friends tell your family tell your dog just so he feels loved or she feels loved if you have a dog if you don't if you have a cat do the same anyway i'm out see you next week peace Thank you.